everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ruth Ann. Hey, you well. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Great to see everybody. Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. Um, guys, feel free to. Um, hey, hey, Mandy. Good to have you here. Noreen, uh, Shamila. Lots of familiar voice uh, names. Great to see everybody. Feel free to put on your video if you like. Um, we. Uh, this is definitely an interactive session. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, getting started here momentarily. Um, you know, we are also live streaming this um, on a um, couple different platforms. So uh, really excited to, to kind of kick off a new season of BizHack Live. And uh, we'll talk about this in a sec, but we have some really exciting sessions coming up. So really looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to go ahead uh, and share uh, my screen. Um, in a sec, and uh, and then we'll get started. And thanks again, guys, for for coming and coming on time, and 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 really uh, excited to have you here. Uh, Lilia Posos with BizHack is uh, on the line and uh, able to answer any questions you might have. Um, if you're interested in learning more about what we do, uh, happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you, and she can help arrange for that. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to uh, the second season of BizHack Live. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack, uh, where we train uh, digital, uh, we train small businesses, microenterprises, solo consultants, agencies in the latest and greatest of digital marketing. Uh, really excited today to uh, welcome uh, Yoel Gutierrez, who's going to be talking about Google My Business. Uh, before we launch into him and his presentation, I did want to um, introduce myself as well as the BizHack Live's really uh, series, really exciting upcoming events. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I am the founder and CEO of BizHack. I am an ink-stained wretch. I spent 15 years uh, working in journalism at its highest levels, the Miami Herald, Washington Post as well as in broadcast at PBS, NPR, and the local NPR affiliate, WLRN, where I was its news director. As part of that, I did win a Pulitzer Prize with the Miami Herald for our coverage of Elian Gonzalez, and I covered many of the seminal events as a journalist in the last 20 years in our community, including the anniversary of Hurricane uh, Andrew and many of the hurricanes that have come since. Um, after I transitioned into marketing, uh, which I really consider business storytelling in 2013. My first job was for a South Florida company called Liberty Power. It's a billion dollar energy company. Really excited to get my start there. Uh, kind of cut my teeth on digital marketing and began teaching digital marketing for Miami-Dade Miami College, one of the largest colleges in the country. After that, I became the head of growth marketing for a software startup called Offercraft a B2B SaaS company and I went from pre -re we went from pre-revenue to exit in two years while I was heading up marketing there uh, from no revenue to a two and a half million dollar run rate. And after we, that company was sold, I uh, had an option, a couple options about what to do next and that's when I decided I really wanted to help other business owners in the sometimes bumpy journey that is learning digital marketing and using it to attract leads and sales. And so that's what I've been doing uh, full time since uh, 2017. BizHack was named uh, top startup uh, by the Miami Herald. Uh, we have been in accelerator programs funded by Goldman Sachs and the Knight Foundation. We've partnered with Miami-Dade College, Broward College and FIU, the largest educational institutions here in South Florida. Uh, on a personal level, I went to Princeton undergrad, got a master's degree at FIU, go Panthers, and I had a Fulbright scholarship in Argentina. So as a service to the community, we have been offering uh, a weekly series of live free webinars with amazing subject area experts. And today uh, we're gonna be featuring Yoel Gutierrez talking about Google My Business next week we have the head of small business for TikTok. Strongly encourage you to uh, sign up for that. Uh, we are going to be limiting seats. We have more than 200 people already signed up. Uh, I couldn't uh, encourage it enough. TikTok has been in the news, as all of you know, um, 
because of its potential sale, because of the Trump administration's threat to close it down, and frankly, because of its extraordinary growth uh, and some of the privacy concerns that have come with that. It is the biggest innovation uh, in social media since Facebook, absolutely for sure. I just put a link into the, event, uh, to the chat and I would definitely encourage all of you to enroll and sign up for that if you haven't already. It's gonna be a fabulous day. Um, we're gonna ask her about all the things I mentioned, but more importantly, we're gonna talk to Becca about how you can use TikTok to reach your customers and grow. Um, and they just launched in June a self-service advertising platform similar to what Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook offer. And so it's a brand new offering and we're gonna learn all about it. After that, we have um, uh, the following week. One of the focuses at BizHack is storytelling and one of my expertise is business, is business storytelling. And we have the amazing Dave Bricker, who's going to be here to talk about business storytelling uh, and the power it can have for your business. All of our marketing really comes on the foundation and core of your business story. And I don't know anybody better than Dave talked about that. The week after that, we're going to be talking about how to put yourself in the shoes of your customers with one of our amazing instructors, Cheryl Cattell. Um, she has been a leader in the community in the, through the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, and uh, she is another great resource for you. The week after that, we're going to be talking about Zoom mastery for businesses. This is incredibly important for marketing and especially sales, and we're bringing Rosemary Ravenel back. She's going to be introducing her newly trademarked Zoom score, which is a metric you can use to see how good you're presenting yourself on Zoom, and she's coached me in that area. And then we're talking about mobile marketing in Latin America. If you want to sign up for all of them, we strongly encourage you get a season pass. The season pass will give you automated reminders, calendar invites, and follow-up emails with recordings of all of the sessions I mentioned, plus some other ones we have coming up in October and November and December. Strongly encourage you to sign up for this. Uh, it's $25 and that money will go towards helping make sure that we able, are able to continue to offer this free service to the community. Um, and I know that some of you, Ruth Ann Smith and others are part of our season pass holders and we're very appreciative of you and the support you've given us uh, to help make sure that this BizHack Live is a service we can keep providing to the community. Today's speaker is Yoel Gutierrez. Yoel is a BizHack lead instructor. Uh, we only have uh, certified a few of those. Uh, he is the owner and operator of Mosquito Joe of Miami, which is a pest control company. Uh, they do outdoor spraying of mosquitoes. He also owns several other businesses. Yoel is an expert in Google My Business, not because he's a digital marketing agency, but because he is a business owner who's leveraged Google My Business to make a lot more money. In fact, this year, Yoel is on track to double the size of Mosquito Joe, in part because as people spend more time at home, they're investing more in their homes, in home services like pest control. Um, so he is a uh, amazing talent and someone I would definitely, uh, I'm very excited to present to all of you. We are also both graduates of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, and he has also gone through the BizHack Academy Program. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and hand it over to my good friend, uh, my partner, BizHack lead instructor, Yoel Gutierrez. Welcome, Yoel. Thank you, Dan. Hey, everybody. So first of all, I wanna thank BizHack and Dan for this opportunity to share a little bit of my, of my knowledge on this uh, ride that we call business. And I'm very appreciative of that. Um, I'm actually co-owner of Mosquito Joe. I don't, I don't wanna reduce my partner's um, experience in, in, in this business. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna sh start and share my screen. And let me know if you guys see everything okay. See it great. Okay, perfect. So like Dan said, I'm not uh, an expert in any way. I don't have all his acc accolades. Um, I just, a person, a business owner that have, that have has used the platform uh, for many years and feel that I've gotten uh, a good grasp on it. I've seen what works, what doesn't work. Uh, so today we'll talk about um, what 
what Google My Business is. And I don't want to say the seven steps. Uh, I'll say my seven steps uh, to make sure that you're getting the most out of, out of Google My Business as a small business owner. So that being said, so what is Google My Business? Google My Business is basically your business profile on Google. The, the information here shows up in several locations. Google My Business complements your existing website uh, by giving your business a public ent identity, a presence with a listing on Google, uh, which is the most popular search engine in the world. So this is what the dashboard looks like. And you get to it by going to business.google.com. So you'll see a lot of information when you get there, once you logged in. So this presentation is, is, is a couple things. It's, it's a high level uh, presentation showing you some of the parts that I feel are the most important. And I also assume that you already have a Google My Business listing for most of it. Um, if you don't, you might wanna go uh, through that first, go through the process of getting it set up, and then you, you can watch this uh, presentation again after. And, and one thing I would add, Yoel, is Google My Business listings appear when you search for a business name. Yep. It's what appears there. on the right-hand column of your search. Right. So why Google My Business? Businesses with a Google presence are twice as likely to have customers view them as reputable. 80% of all desktop traffic goes through Google, so it'd be smart to have a listing uh, that's up to date and fully accurate on Google. Google My Business will help you establish a rock solid address so that customers can find you on Google Maps. And if you're not paying for SEO, which is a search engine optimization, Google My Business is the best place to start uh, for local SEO. It's a, it's a print first step, um, local SEO strategy. Getting on Google My Business increases your chances of showing up on Google's knowledge graph, on their local pack, on their Google Maps and organic search traffic. So the knowledge graph shows up when you search for the name of a, of a company. So on the left hand side, you see there I searched for the flip side, which is a natural wine and, uh, and liquor store. And that shows up when you on Google desktop on the right hand side, it gives you custom um, business information like the address, the hours, the phone number, um, questions and answers. And then you have what's called the Google local pack. Now the local pack shows up when you search for a type of business that's near you, uh, say MRI center near me or taco restaurant around me. Um, to note also is that Google most of the time knows your location of, your, of the device. So just when you put into Google maps, let's say um, taco store or a taco restaurant, it, it, it knows that where you are and it'll show the, the, the listings that are around you. And then finally you have Google Maps, which is pretty self-explanatory when you search for a company or business on Google Maps, you'll get their information there. This is my Google My Business page. I'm sorry, this is what the, uh, the knowledge graph looks like when you search for Mosquito Joe of Miami. So in Google, I search for Mosquito Joe of Miami and this is what you see on the right hand side, that's the knowledge graph. Now, since Google knows when you're logged into their platforms, like, uh, let's say Google, uh, Chrome, it knows that I'm an admin of that account. So they started this update where you can edit info for your Google My Business right from the search or Google Maps. So you can see there how I can do a quick edit by, by clicking edit info, create a post, I can add photos, can answer reviews or create an ad straight from here, which is a nice little feature they've added. So my seven steps to Googling your business, we're gonna start with the most recent um, update and most relevant update, which are the COVID-19 features. Then we'll move on to the importance of a complete business listing. We'll talk about content, is it still king? The importance of reviews how to stay relevant with posts, what's working and what's not, basically the analytics for dummies. And we'll communicate through messaging, which is direct messaging through uh, the Google My Business platform. So Yoel- If you're going to pass or if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, be before you get going, 
first of all, exactly. We have a chat going. You'll see a link to the TikTok event and the season pass in there. And um, please uh, feel free to put your questions in there and I'll be uh, interspersing those questions throughout. The other thing I wanted to do is take a minute and pause and really talk about why Google My Business is an incredibly important and relevant tool in this COVID world and for which types of businesses this is particularly relevant for. So if you are a local business, a business that primarily serves a local geographic area, this tool is utterly critical. This is essentially Google's version of Yelp. But unlike Yelp, who are obnoxious to work with, Google is uh, making it easier. And this is kind of a loss leader for them. They don't look to make a ton of money out of you like Yelp does. So this is basically, I think, part of the reason why Google My Business has become, in my opinion, the single most important change in digital marketing in the last six months since COVID. And the reason for that is I really think that people are really tired of Yelp uh, from the business owner perspective, where it's very much pay to play. And also, um, Google has really invested a lot in a lot of the features and upgrades to make it both easier to use and more intuitive to use. And then finally, you might remember something called Google Plus, which was Google's kind of failed attempt to create a social media network, sort of like Facebook. And as you're going to see, they took a lot of the back end. They discontinued Google Plus. It was largely considered a failure. Um, very few people used it. Um, it was primarily to help with search engine optimization. In many ways, although Google won't necessarily say this, I see Google My Business in part as kind of Google Plus 2.0. And I got to say, they learned a lot from what didn't work and what did. And it's become incredibly powerful. The power of Google My Business for your local company is if you do these seven steps that Yoel is about to outline, you will see a dramatic increase in organic, also known as free traffic to your website. Yoel has seen a huge increase in traffic to his website because of the changes he made. And he has monetized that because those people end up becoming his customers. So if you are a retail or storefront or locally based service business, this is an utterly essential part of your digital marketing toolkit. And that's why we are highlighting it here today. Yeah, you're definitely not overselling it because it, it is a very important part of, of our business. Um, and just being on the, the top search engine, um, being on their back end with correct information, you, you just, you can't pay for, for SEO like that. Yeah, because a lot of this is new, also, not many companies, especially lesser sophisticated companies, have kind of jumped on it. And one other thing I want to tell you, and this is a little bit of a scam that I'm hearing about, Google My Business is a desktop search product. There is no mobile Google, Google My Business, at least not yet. So there are people out there that are selling mobile optimization for Google My Business, and that's a scam. There's no such thing. And um, you know, part of what we're here to do is help educate you about what not to do. So don't hire a company to optimize your mobile Google My Business listing because there is no such thing. Right. So in general, just having your Google My Business updated uh, will help on the mobile side because that's where they're finding you, right? Google Maps, Google Search, it's all. Yeah. And Re Renan... Uh, There's no Google. Yeah, Renan, uh, you know, has confirming what we've heard from so many businesses that Yelp is a nightmare. Mercedes, yeah. you know, for home-based businesses, B2B businesses, non-geographically located businesses, there is work that you can do in Google My Business, but it as a tool will not be quite as powerful as it is for Yoel, who has a geographic territory. So, you know, for my business, I, I sell courses internationally online. Google My Business is a part of my SEO, but it's not the core of it like it's become for UL. You can still use it, but um, as we'll talk about in future weeks, LinkedIn in many ways has become even more powerful than ever for you. Yeah, so I, I don't want to downplay the importance of it either, but having a home-based business 
Um, there are options when creating or um, taking over the, account, the, the Google My Business account where you can choose the option that I do not have a brick and mortar uh, or I only provide uh, services to customers outside of my place of business. Um, cool, thank you, Dan. So, let's see, get this back up. My first step are the new COVID-19 features and what, what you should be doing. Um, so they've updated, this is one of the things I have already gone through. So, so they updated the business profile. You can update it directly from Google search or maps. Um, when you search for your business and you're an admin of that business. Uh, you can then just edit directly from the search uh, page. You're allowed more now to set more hours. So think about this if you're a restaurant and your curbside pickup is, is different than, um, than what your regular in-store in hours were. You, you can have different blocks of hours now. They've updated that. They've also provided a marketing kit for COVID-19. So if you go to marketingkit.withgoogle.com, you'll see there that uh, you can create um, these printable posters, digital uh, social media templates that they have that focus on business updates, which is very nice of them to do. And then if your store was uh, affected by COVID-19, update your Google My Business profile to provide the most accurate information for your customers. Uh, again, for example, if you change your hours of operation, uh, if, you, if you close early, if you're temporarily closed, um, you can add pickup and delivery att um, attributions. And the updates will show on your business profile right on the Google search and Google Maps. Uh, so very important. So some of the updates that, that you should be providing to your customers are your adjusted hours of operations. So again, if you close early, um, add more hours like we talked about. Um, you can select an attribute that shows you offer online services like classes or appointments or estimates. Uh, these are attributes that will show directly on your listing. You can communicate your delays on specific business services. So if um, the pandemic has delayed your process by any means, you can update that and let your audience know about that. Um, you can tell them extra services that you're providing for the community. And if your business is temporarily closed, you definitely want to put that up there. You don't want people coming to your place of business when you're closed because that just leaves a bad taste in, the, in their mouths. Um, all these updates will show on your business profile and on Google Maps. So they've also had um, post updates. So the new COVID-19 post types, uh, you can share more detailed and timely updates uh, about what's going on in your business. You can add information about closures, reduce hours, availability of gift cards, uh, and the availability to make donations to your business, um, online classes and visits, and uh, just let the community know the measures you're taking to keep them and your employees safe, uh, just to create a sense of, um, of well-being for that business. Uh, the COVID-19 updates and the app will appear prominently on the profile and are more noticeable to the customers. They have a, I think like a little yellow flag um, when you post a COVID-19 post. And I'll go through more through the COVID-19 post later on. And then one of the last tips, uh, if you're a restaurant, and you're using one of the bigger uh, delivery services. Uh, Google has purchased a, a company called the ordering.app and it's a way for businesses that don't have any online ordering uh, to have that already integrated with Google. Uh, they usually charge one and a half percent per order, um, but they are waiving that fee till January 1st, 2021. There's no other fees no subscription fees, setup fees. Um, you can uh, customize your online menu for direct ordering, curbside pickup. Uh, if you have your own delivery people, you can use this in-house uh, to do your own deliveries. So I thought it was a very cool um, update that they did and very nice for them to do uh, during this uh, pandemic. And Yoel, is this ordering app um, do you know any background of, did they acquire this app and then integrate it? Yeah, correct. So they acquired the app and, and, and they integrate it into their own Google platform. So wow. it, it makes it pretty seamless, uh, especially on mobile. So there's an online order button straight on your, on your business listing and it'll take them through just ordering your menu and, and whatever's on there. What, what are some of the options that restaurants and retailers have uh, for other kind of out of the box ordering? Is, is this to like replace 
you know, say like Uber Eats or anything else. I mean, it's basically Uber Eats because I've heard from a lot of my a fellow business owners that have restaurants that Uber Eats takes a large chunk of their their profits. Um, and during this time, restaurants need as much profit as they can to, and to stay in their pockets. Um, so I thought this was one of the um, great ways that Google came up with a way to help uh, these local restaurants. Um, basically, it's free until January. Wow, and 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 this is and even at the uh, one and a half percent order fee, uh, yeah. you know that's still way less than what um, you know Uber Eats or, or or some of the other options out there charge. The um, yeah. can you do both? Could you have Uber Eats but still use the ordering dot app in your Google My Business listing and kind of take it both ways? I don't see why not. Yeah, but you would have to fulfill the order yourself. That's the correct. What Uber correct, Eats yeah. does is it does include delivery, yeah. whereas... So, yeah, correct. But the other cool thing is I know they integrate into your POS system. Excuse me. I think if, if you use Square or one other one, it goes right into it. So you'll get the orders right away, just like you do with Uber. Yeah. POS being point of sale or how you basically take payment. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they integrate with Stripe, which is really common for online, uh, or PayPal, which is another one. Maybe. I don't remember, but and it's on their site. Yeah. yeah, this is great stuff. If anybody knows answers to that, let us know. Um, you know, or if you used it, I would love to hear somebody that's used yeah. it. Anybody in this group used the ordering app? Because I know Yoel has built into his website um, an e-commerce function through, I think you use Stripe, don't you? I use both Stripe and Square. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't think anybody in this group has used it, but um, if, if you have, speak up, let us know. Yeah, I, I definitely want to hear about it. Speaking of, if anybody has used Google My Business for their own businesses successfully, let us know. We'll definitely bring you into the conversation. So just yeah, shoot, sure. shoot a note to me on, uh, on the chat and, and let us know. Cool. So moving on. So when you're creating or taking over a listing, you want to make sure that your business category is set up correctly. Now, this is very important and there's a few reasons why it's important. Uh, the first one is you want to show up when people search for the things that they're searching for, right? So if you're a, um, a Mexican restaurant, you want to show up when people are looking for Mexican restaurant and not for Italian restaurant. Um, so there, you have to make sure that this is right. Now at, at this time, Google has over 4,000 categories and it's growing but not every category is in there. Now, if your business category is not in there, choose the closest thing you can. So think of um, a diaper store is not gonna be in there. The closest thing was probably baby store. So I'm gonna show you later on um, how you can get around this and how you can uh, leverage Google's um, internal parsing and, and, and AI to, uh, to overcome that issue. So the other thing is different categories will unlock different keywords. Um, this is also some, uh, it's worth doing some competitive research uh, to see what keywords your, your competition are, are coming up as. Um, so what I'm talking about is think about uh, an auto dealership. Now, if I had a Toyota dealership, I might want to be more specific and, and, and say Toyota dealership instead of auto, because I don't want to show up for everybody that's, that's searching for an auto. Um, so do your best to pick the, the closest one, um, and then we'll, we'll go over how to overcome if you don't find your, your category. When you fill out your business info, you definitely wanna fill out as much as possible. So have, have you ever looked at a, a local business in Google Maps, saw that it was open, drove all the way there, only to find out that business was closed? How annoying is that? How, how would it make you feel towards that company? But more important, wouldn't you turn around, go to their competitor, go to somebody else that's open? That's how important it is. So filling out all this information correctly without skipping a beat, no typos, make sure every number is correct is super important. So some of the stuff that they ask for is your business name, description, business type, your address, you know, et cetera. Um, also your geographical locations where you serve. So if, if 
like like my business, I serve different zip codes, different parts of Miami. Um, I put those in there. Um, if you're an online service, you'll probably put the U.S. Uh, I I know that Dan had you know he 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 has an online service, so he can um, market through the whole U.S. I'm not like that. I have to put specifically where I'm at. And then the description is where you add value by using specific keywords to your business. So earlier, as I was talking about, when you don't pick the correct category, you pick the closest one to you, inside the description of your business is where you can overcome this. So in there, if, if I had a diaper store and I chose a category baby store, right? In my description, I would add my, my description of my business that I sell diapers and Google would parse that information and it would come up when, uh, a possible customer is searching for diapers in that area. Uh, so that's, that's really important. And that's how you get around not having a category um, that what your, what your business does basically. So like I said, uh, there's over 4,000 categories, but your description explains what you sell and provide. Um, so make sure that's filled out properly as well. So one of the pro tips that I found um, and people don't grasp the importance of this, um, it's called NAP. So NAP is basically your number, address, and phone number. So it's really important to keep it consistent across all the listings. And when I say all the listings, what I mean is Google My Business, Yelp, Foursquare, um, any other site that has your information that's a listing site. Um, think of uh, the Yellow Pages, um, any site like that. You really have to have consistency across all those sites because Google pays attention to that. And if, the, if there's any inconsistencies, it hurts your rankings. So you, re, you really wanna pay attention to that. Um, I personally see this a lot because there's a, a local coffee shop right behind my office uh, where I usually get coffee and, and, and lunch. And most of the times I just walk there. Um, but sometimes I wanna call in my order, you know, and go pick it up and come back. Several times I've gone on Google to get his number. And when I type his business name, I get a number, I call, and it's the coffee roasters down the street. Now, granted, they used to be the same company and they broke off, but they broke off years ago. So it's really frustrating to me that I can never find this guy's number online. And I'm sure you, it's happened to you as well. So make sure that you, you make that your, your nap, your number, address, and phone are consistent across all sites. Um, and for a little tip, do the same with your hours of operations. Because if on Google, your hours are eight to five, on Yelp, your hours are nine to six. That hurts you. That hurts your SEO and that hurts um, your ranking. Um, so these three little nuggets of information are very important. Um, your cost, it, it can be the difference between your customer getting lost, calling a wrong number, or just them being frustrated, wasting their time, and possibly visiting a competitor. And you definitely don't want that. Um, another thing that I've heard recently uh, that I cannot say is 100% true, is that I heard that Google is not gonna give as much value or weight to the nap of other listing sites. They're gonna, they're gonna worry about what's on Google My Business more than they are anywhere else. So if you're not using a listing management site, software or agency, make sure that your Google My Business information is up to date and perfect, because that's where it's going to. So the other section, oh, sorry. The other section that you, you should be paying attention to in, in, the, in the listing are the question and answers and the edits uh, part. So the, the, the question and answers are, are visible to anybody that searches for your business, mostly on the Google Knowledge Graph. And on the left-hand side, you see there the Ben Liquor Lounge, and you'll see a question that's asked, is the bar open? The problem with these questions is that anybody can answer them. You, a competitor, a customer, a non-customer. So the owner of this, of this business has the chance to respond and let them know if they aren't open, if they're not open, what date they plan on opening. So it's, it's, it's very important to, to respond to these. Um, somebody could just as easily state that the business is closed when it's open. And if you're not paying attention to it, other customers looking for this business are gonna see that it's closed and they just might not even check. They might not call, they might not go, just because that question stated that 
the bar was closed. So the same thing with a suggest an edit, which you see on the lower right hand side. Anybody can suggest an edit to your site, to your business listing, excuse me. And if you don't deny the, the, the edit, it most probably will go, go live. So somebody can change your email, somebody can change your website, somebody can change your number if you're not paying attention to it. So it's, it's really sad to, to say that that's, that's, that can happen, but it's done for, with a purpose and Google always has a purpose behind what they're doing. Um, maybe you had an emergency one day at your store and you had to close early. A potential customer can go to, you, go to your store. If they find that you're closed that day for any reason, they can uh, suggest an edit that those hours of operations are incorrect. And if you don't catch that, it'll change that time permanently. So now any, any potential customer looking for you on that day and time is gonna say, well, they're closed, we're not gonna go. Um, so it's also very important to, to make sure that you keep that, that you're looking at it, that you're paying attention to it, that you're answering your, your own questions. Now, a little trick that I have and I've learned is that in the questions and answers, you can have multiple answers. But if there's an answer that's correct and it's lower in the, in the feed, all you need is two likes to move that answer up. So just keep that in mind. If there's an incorrect answer up top and a correct answer underneath, get a couple of people to like it and you can move it up to make sure that you have the most uh, up-to-date information. So again, this is pretty high level. So these, these uh, sections are pretty quick, but um, pretty important. Um, next, we'll be talking about the importance of pictures and videos. And this is one that I've seen that really makes a difference. So images and videos help to show the legitimacy of your business. It shows your story, your culture, uh, the personality of your business. It helps to create social trust, social proof. Um, and it shouldn't surprise you that Google rewards businesses that include images and videos. Um, having relevant images on your listing will help your business stand out from the crowd achieve higher rankings and attract attention to possible customers. Um, in addition to, to being able to upload, to, to you being able to upload photos, customers can also upload photos and videos. Um, now that's a nice feature, but it could also hurt you. Um, if the business, if the pictures aren't of your business and you didn't post them, you can get them removed. There is a process, um, but it's harder if it contains anything uh, of your business, your logo, uh, an employee, a building, anything that shows your business, you're probably not gonna be able to get it removed. Um, but an, an acquaintance of mine <clears throat> that runs a media agency um, has a moving customer as a, a moving company as a customer. And a competitor posted several pictures of broken furniture, saying that the moving company had broken all their furniture. Fortunately, since there was no evidence of the company being the ones that made the damage, there was no employee, there was no logos, there was no pictures of the truck. Um, they were able to get those pictures removed, which is really good for them. Um, the situation would have been very different if there was any of that in, in, the, in those pictures. Um, so if that was the case, pictures would not have been removed. There's a question from Mercedes Zepco about if an answer uh, is incorrect, do you have the ability to delete that answer? You don't have the ability to delete. I think you can flag it. Um, for review, uh, but my suggestion would be to respond to it, answer, answer correctly, and try and get it liked up. That would be the, the quickest thing you can do. And Marcelo Salap asked, do you use an automated software to either answer questions or alert you to new answers? No. Got it. It's just the, the process they take with emails. I, th I think they email you an update. Um, and I've, I've had edits where I didn't, didn't get anything. I just, I, luckily I log into my Google, my business just about every day. Um, so I'm, I'm well aware of what's going on there. Uh, Noreen was just asking about the best source for generic pictures for business coaching and training consulting services. Um, one thing I'll quickly say is that uh, I'll put a couple links to, um, uh, open source, creative commons photographs that you can use uh, without having to pay for them, like Pixabay and Pexels. But uh, I know, uh, Yoel, you have found that you get more effective results from just photos taken uh, from the field. So even like screenshots of Zoom meetings uh, could potentially work. 
Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so on my next slide. Um, so 60% of customers say that local search results with good images capture their attention and push them towards a decision. Uh, so some of my um, tips about pictures are upload a variety of, Im of images uh, to Google My Business. Exterior shots, interior shots, pictures of staff, pictures of products, pictures of you doing services. Avoid overly professional photographs as this can actually make your, your, your business seem un untrustworthy. People want to feel and see a real business. So talking about on that point, try not to use stock photography because uh, Google will find stock photography and remove them. So just because if you do use stock photography, try and change it, add your logo on top, uh, do something else to it and don't just post a same picture that anybody else can post. Um, it's really easy to use this device right here to take pictures of everyday things and just upload it. Remember, Google My Business does have a mobile app and you can post directly from there and upload photos and videos directly from there. So they make it super easy for you to do this. Now, some of the, the things you can do for videos is, so use videos to show customers why you're different. You know, wh wh why, why should I use you instead of somebody else? Show off your work, educate your audience, um, explain your products and services, show the human side of your business. A lot of times we take a lot of videos of uh, our birthday parties, us singing happy birthday to, to, our, to our guys, just the guys hanging around. Uh, I take a lot of video of the office girls just being on the phone. It, it's, it's really easy to get content. Uh, I thought it was hard before. Um, so it was really hard for me to think about content. And then I just said, you know what? It's just day-to-day -day stuff. Just put it out there. Um, SEO loves video. So make sure that you are putting out video. Uh, don't put any type of video either. And make it relevant to your business, um, to your service. We already know that Google appreciates businesses that utilize their, their Google, My Bisting, uh, Google My Business listing to their full potential. Um, it's, it's believed that listings that have videos, posts, and, and uh, images rank better than bare bone uh, listing. So if you just created your Google My Business listing, filled out your information and left it like that, your competitor that has videos and images is gonna rank better than you. So just keep that in mind. Does that answer your question then? Yeah, that's perfect. Any questions so uh, far? Noreen says, for privacy purposes, it's difficult to take pictures of my client sessions and show existing clients. Also during this time of remote training, it's hard to show valuable or relevant pictures. Um, yeah, I totally agree, Noreen. Um, you know, I think, I think you're just gonna have to get creative. Um, you know, maybe take pictures of yourself working uh, maybe get permission from certain clients uh, to include videos or, or, or still photographs. Um, but what I will say is that, um, you know, again, Google My Business is most useful uh, as a tool for location-based business and retail businesses. So, uh, you know, for you consultants out there uh, or even folks like me, you should definitely use it, uh, but it, it might not be quite as powerful a tool for some of the reasons we've been talking about. Yeah, I've spoken to business owners that are, have like restaurants and they're afraid of taking pictures of people eating and stuff like that. You don't always have to do that. You know, take pictures of food. That's, I mean, that's, that's one of the top things, right? Food pictures, the kitchen staff, the wait staff. Yeah. Uh, the, there, you can do stuff. Just, you just gotta get creative, just like you said, Dan. You know, Immacula is saying if you, if someone else uploads a picture or video into your Google My Business, do you get an alert or verification? Not really. Yeah, so it's, it is something, you know, this is another sort of social media channel, if you will, and it is one that you have to, to monitor. Um, I, a lot of these things are really new. So the third party software, the monitoring software that um, you know, Macula or if, uh, you know, that um, Marcelo was asking about, it hasn't really been developed yet, but it's coming because this has become such a key SEO tool. Uh, Jason is actually confirming what we've experienced, which is he says, I've seen quick changes in traffic to my listing based, of all, based off of consistently posting updates and pictures in Google My Business, like clockwork. Yep. So I, I have some graphs later on that, that show my experience with that as well. Um, so he's, he's, he's 100% spot on. 
Yeah. So we have about 16 minutes left. Um, I'll let you to it. Time went faster than I thought. So reviews, right? What, what other people say about your business carries more value than what you have to say about your business, uh, to be honest. Um, responding to reviews shows that you value your customers and the feedback that, they're, that they leave about your business. I'm sure all of you know about the, the importance of online reviews. How often do you spend looking through reviews and for restaurants, you know, for that new washer and dryer set? Um, my wife and I just bought a new house and we're currently going, going through that. So uh, reviews drive me crazy because you can find a whole lot and then there's that one unhappy person that is never happy for it, then you have to look for a different washer. Um, so you might know how important reviews are, but do you know how important it is to respond? Um, Google itself confirms that responding to reviews improves your local SEO. So 91% of consumers regularly or occasionally uh, read online reviews, which is a lot, 91%. Um, 84% of people trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. So if I get a recommendation from my friend or a family member, an online review means just about as much to 84% of, of, of people. That's crazy to me, but it's what happens. 74% of consumers say that positive reviews make them trust a local business more. So again, that, that a social proof, that social trust, it all starts with reviews as well. So negative reviews are not necessarily bad for business. People are more likely to trust a company that has a few negative reviews and one that, as opposed to one that has zero. 33% um, of customers who leave a negative review turned it into a positive review after getting a response from the, from the business. And 34% just uh, simply deleted the, 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 uh, the negative review, which is great, that's what you want. So the trick is to respond both to positive and negative reviews. Arguably, I would say negative reviews are more important, but positive are just as important. In our business, every single review gets a response. Um, if you get a negative review, try to be empathetic, try to resolve the issue. If the response you're trying to get for a negative review doesn't give you the right feeling to do it over uh, the platform uh, out in the open, take it offline. Have a call, have an email, try and resolve the issue as best you can. If you are able to resolve it, um, try and have them update the review. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work, sometimes it does. Um, if you can't, you update your end to what happened and what you did and how you were able to resolve it. Um, a lot of times people just don't care about updating the review, even though the issue was resolved. But as long as you respond, people looking for those reviews can see that you responded and how you responded. And that just provi provides more trust. Um, it's happened to me many times where I've gotten reviews and most of the time they're not even customers. Um, so I respond uh, saying, you know, we can't find you in our system, anything you need, where here's our phone number, where we're happy to help and assist. Um, it's just having that response in there is really important. If you're having issues getting reviews, one of the ways that we do it is a lot of times we just have a contest. And one of the ways to enter the contest is to leave a review. Now, we're not asking for five-star reviews. We're not asking for people that aren't our customers to leave reviews because you definitely don't want to do that. So most of the time, the, the contests are for our customers. Um, and it just gives them a way to enter the contest. And we've, we've had a lot of success uh, running those contests. Um, anybody have questions on the review slides? Um, we did see uh, um, Adriana Shaked mentioned that she does get email notifications when reviews are left by customers. Yeah, so, yeah reviews, yes. Yeah, uh, th and uh, thanks yeah, well, to for saying this is great information. Uh, Yoel, do you, this is from Marcelo, do you explicitly ask the 34% to, de to delete the review? No, the, uh, these are people that just, when you responded to a negative review, this is the percent of people that just did that on their own without yeah. asking anything. Yeah, so, so you're not so much asking them to delete the review, but you're addressing the issue in their review. And oftentimes that personal touch leads them to either delete the review or update the review and make it more positive. But, you know, everybody screws up and I think there's a, a humanity, uh, it gives a, th a third, a three dimensionality to the, to the company. 
Marcelo also said that market research suggests that reviews that are older than six months old are mentally discarded. That's a good insight. Thank you. Yeah, so having up to date and recent reviews is it's 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 just a regular best practice. You have to solicit reviews. Correct. The more up to date they are, the more relevancy Google gives them and the more relevancy your customers give them. All right. So moving on to step five, posts, uh, events, offers, and more. Ashley, Ashley was asking what the award for the contest is. I think we ran, uh, the last one we ran was uh, a barbecue grill. Nice. For our customers, yeah. What's good about that is, you know, UL does outdoor mosquito spraying. So his customers are people who want to have a better outdoor experience. So a lot of those folks are barbecue and grillers. So that's a great example of using an offer that appeals to your target audience. Yeah. Definitely keep that in mind when we're making contests. Don't just do a random contest, <laughs> even though those work too, but you know, try and make it relevant to your business. So starting with posts. So a Google My Business post is a social post that appears in local searches and Google Maps. Now, we're saying this is kind of like a social media platform. It is, but it's not. You can't like posts, you can't respond to posts. Uh, this is more for the business to get information and updates out to the audience. Um, so the importance of getting your message and content in front of searchers is huge, right? But getting that content in front of them in the right place and the right time is even more important. So Google My Business post is one of the ways Google gets that content out there. Um, as you can see in this post, this was uh, a few of our office girls that hit their sales goal five months early. And it was just a post that we put to, to, to congratulate them. And this one actually got a lot of, a lot of feedback uh, by, by image views, because that's what, that's what you can tell. You can tell on a post image views, and if it has a call to action, uh, the image clicks. So then moving on to call to action, um, when you post a what's new, or I think now it's an ad update post, um, it should contain a pic or video, um, some information about that pic or video, and a call to action if deemed necessary. But if I'm being honest, I suggest to use a call to action whenever possible. Um, it's another way to get customers going to your site and improving your SEO. Um, even if it's a learn more, an order line, a sign up now, a call now, um, try to use it as much as you can. These are the different types of posts that are available right now. You have a question, Dan, or? Uh, I just was gonna address Jason's question. That, no, that was actually a screenshot, not of an Instagram post, but of a Google My Business post, right? Correct. So it looks a heck of a lot. Again, Google My Business is kind of morphed into a social media channel. Um, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is like just basic social media best practices. Um, and that's that idea that I mentioned earlier about Google Plus. Yeah, it looks a heck of a lot like a Facebook post, doesn't it? Or an Instagram post. It does. It does, it does. So these are, these are the different types of uh, posts. Um, so you have the COVID-19 support, which is the newest one. This is one where you can let customers uh, click on a link to buy get your, either gift cards or donate to your business. Now, it should be said that you cannot purchase the gift card or make the donation straight on the platform. You will need a link to an offsite to your site um, to do that. Um, you can't do it directly from the platform. Then you have the COVID-19 update, which is basically just text. You don't, you, you don't have access to an image or video on that one, but it's more to let customers know about any changes to your business due to, to the pandemic. And these posts uh, show up more prominently and get uh, reviewed and approved way quicker than anything else. Then you have the ad offer, which is a post up to promote sales, discounts, or coupons. Uh, you also have the ability to use a coupon code uh, to track any sales coming from Google My Business, which I highly suggest uh, that you do if you do an offer um, on Google My Business. Then you have the ad product. So ad product is basically that you're adding a product that you're offering, and, but the only difference is that these don't show on the, on the posts, these show in the catalog section on the knowledge graph uh, on the right hand side. So that's the only difference between the ad products and the rest. Um, the ad update, which, is, which was known as the what's new post, is more for general information. I usually, I usually take any Instagram post or Facebook post that I do for my business and just repost it on Google My Business. Uh, that's a easy, if, if you're active in those platforms, it, it should be super easy for you to be active here because you're just copying and pasting. It's Absolutely. Not 
if Google doesn't punish you for repeating content, you also can solicit reviews that are on your Facebook page and have them ask, ask them to repost that review on your Google page and that won't hurt you either. So they don't actually have to rewrite the review. You can just have, that's a, that's a really good way to build up. If they've reviewed you on Yelp or on um, Facebook, you can have them just review you on Google too. Yep. And then lastly, they have the add event, which is just that you're, you're adding an event post, which can uh, contain dates and times of the event and probably, and I think if I remember correctly, an, an, an end date. No, that's for the offer. The offer has a, an end date where you can say that this offer is valid up until a certain date. So those are the different types of posts that you can do on Google My Business. Next, we'll go through a little insights. This, this will be quick because it's very easy. It's very straightforward. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the numbers that I get. Uh, this is very valuable information. So on the insights tab in Google My Business, uh, there's some information here that you can learn. Uh, basically how people are finding your listing, where people are finding your listing, what they're doing after they find your listing, and also the top keywords used when they found you. So on the how, it's on the type, uh, top right side of the, the screen, those total, total searches where you see direct discovery and branded. So this is the how, so how they found you. So the direct means that people were searching directly for your business name or location. Discovery means people searching for a generic category uh, and they find your business that way. And then branded are searches for a brand your business sells that puts you in the results page. So in, in, that, in that sense, you're not the only one on that list. Anybody that's setting that brand will be posted on that search. And then the where. So where are they finding you? Either through the search or through Google Maps. Those are the two options. What are they doing once they find you? Are they going to your site? Are they requesting directions? Are they calling you or are they initiating a chat? So all that information you can see from the insights tab. So this is what I've learned. So Google wants you to learn Google, to use Google My Business and will reward you by pushing more traffic to your site if you use the platform and you use it often. These, these screenshots were from last year, but they're very important because it's when I noticed what was going on. So on the left-hand side, you'll see spikes. These are actually photo views. So the spikes, I, I usually try and post pictures every day, every other day, a few times a day. Sometimes I'll forget and I'll have a bunch of pictures that I just upload. So that's what happened here. If you look at uh, November 3rd through November 5th, I took a bunch of pictures and I uploaded them into Google My Business. Now the reporting for Google My Business takes a few days. Um, so that's why you see the spike after. But now if you look on the right hand side, during the same time set, after those pictures were uploaded, people saw my pictures, what did they do? They went to my website. Now, if you see all the spikes, they match. Now, I can put two and two together and make four. So I found out the more pictures I post, the more traffic I get to my website. So this was a mind blowing moment for me. And that's when I started posting pictures. If you look at my Google my business dashboard under my photos, how many I've uploaded compared to my competitors. There, there's no competition. I have hundreds of hundreds of photos and they have tens of photos and my traffic shows the difference. So if you take one thing away from here, from this presentation, post photos, please. Um, I just unmute, I asked Jason to unmute himself. Jason Machado. Jason, can you talk a little bit about your experience if you're able to Unmute yourself. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, you all? Good. What's your business? Um, so the name of my company is Elite Impact Glass. We do, uh, we're a dealership and we sell and install Hurricane Impact windows and doors. Oh, great. Yeah. So, you know, my, my experience as far as the pictures and, and, and all of that is, is pretty identical. Uh, it, it's crazy because like sometimes I'll forget, you know, I just with everything everything going on. I forget to post on Google, my business. And I, and, you know, I, I'll go in and check the the statistics after I I'm for go, go maybe a week or so without posting anything. And you see the decrease in traffic. And then as soon as I start remembering and I'm posting every day, consistently, consistently, 
then you start seeing those numbers just completely flip. And it's, it's, it's crazy how up. it's crazy how Google re, uh, rewards you for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually had a question. I saw in your post you do hashtags. I, I typically only do hashtags on social media, but is there is there also a benefit to using hashtags on Google My Business? Well, that might be because the fact that I just copy and paste. Um, it's not really a oh, got you, got you. purposeful thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a good question, though. Thank you, um, J Jason. It's it's great to to meet you. I'm not sure if we've met uh, personally, but I'd love to learn a little bit more about your business. Um, uh, Lily, I will send you a quick note, and if you want to schedule a quick one on one with me, I'd love to to learn a little bit more about what you're doing. We're we're specializing increasingly with home service businesses because uh, those businesses are booming as part of the um, you know everybody's home is their sanctuary. Yeah. Uh, thank you for jumping in. Um, you well, well, well uh, I'm, I'm going to, you want to wrap up the um, presentation and then I'll uh, um, one more slide on the messaging. Um, so Google has added messaging to the list of ways you can easily connect with your customers. Uh, so when a person find, uh, searches for you and finds your listing on Google, they can now message you directly uh, using the messaging feature. Um, so your phone number, the customer's phone number, they're both hidden. And the text message will come through the Google phone line and into the Google app, uh, the Google My Business app. Um, and I want to clarify that this that this messaging option is only available through uh, the Google mobile app, the Google My Business mobile app. You cannot respond or through the desktop version. Um, this will it will not show up when your business gets searched on desktop or laptop. It, it only shows up when they search through the through mobile. Um, this has been a great benefit for me this year. I've gotten a lot of customers this way responding. Respond quickly. Uh, you want to respond within 24 hours. Um, it promotes trust and encouragement. And also, Google may deactivate your account if you don't respond uh, within 24 hours. Oh, wow. So just be wary of that. And um, yeah, so in conclusion, the steps, uh, well, my steps are use the COVID-19 features, complete your business information and add a description, upload pictures daily, Show that, that, that your business is human, that you guys, you know, that you're not just a company and that the customer is not just numbers. Respond to reviews, both good, not good or bad, good and bad. Post updates regularly, stay relevant to your customers. Use the insights to see what's working, what's not working and enable the messaging feature so you can talk directly to your customers. And lastly, I'll leave you with these links that um, Google really wants you to use their, their platforms, all of them, and they provide a lot of education uh, which is free. You can get uh, certifications on, on, on all their programs and, 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 and platforms. Um, there's a lot of information for small businesses, uh, a lot of content um, tools to, to use to create content. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you, Yoel. And as a thank you guys for attending today uh, and sharing with us your, your contact info, we're going to be sending you these slides, which include these links. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a just a quick uh, minute to to share my uh, couple quick points before we wrap up for the for the for this session. Uh, again, uh, this is um, uh, we're about ten days away from the start of our next cohort, uh, our next class of our five week accelerated program in digital marketing. Uh, would welcome you all to apply uh, that four, five week course in accelerated. Uh, accelerated course in online lead generation does include uh, sections on Google ads, Google My Business, uh, LinkedIn ads, social media, content marketing, email, really everything you need to know as a small business to market yourself during these tough times. We are offering scholarships to minority and women owned business and professionals of color and female entrepreneurs. Would love for you to apply for that scholarship at try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. So again, if you want to apply, it's apply.bizhack.com. We do have a pretty strict um, uh, application process, except only about half the people who apply. We do that to kind of guarantee the, the quality and integrity of the course. Uh, but we do have scholarships to help make it more affordable for COVID-impacted COVID businesses. You can go to here, uh, try.bizhack.com slash syllabus to see um, more about the course or to our website where you can learn all about it. We're holding an info session uh, about the course and about the scholarship this Friday at noon. 
Uh, and you can uh, sign up for that at bizhack73.eventbrite.com. Uh, we also have, as we mentioned, coming up uh, not only TikTok, which is an amazing platform and how your business can use it, but we are also partnered with the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association, and we're going to be doing a session on LinkedIn Mastery. Um, that is uh, put on by South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, Association at SFIMA, uh, and you can go to try.bizhack.com slash Safima in order to sign up. There is a slight fee for non-members to attend. The, one of the founders of Safima is Cheryl Cattell, and she's going to be doing a uh, program on how to market, all part of the season pass that hopefully some of you will sign up for. And with that, I just want to say thank you. It's great to be back uh, after a little bit of a summer away, and we look really forward to uh, hopefully having you part of our five-week program and definitely seeing you next Wednesday for our session with TikTok. Thank you, Yoel. Thanks, Lilia. And thanks to all of you uh, for taking the time to do this with us today. And we'll see Thank you guys at 1230. Take care of your time. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Yoel. Great job. Shamila, great to see you. Adriana, uh, Anna Paula, Thank and, and, and Bree, great to see you, Bree. Kara, great to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I think we had Mandy on as well uh, from another Mosquito Joe franchise. Oren, an alumnus of ours. Tommy Marati, another alumnus. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Nancy Dahlberg, uh, let us know if there's anything we can do. Uh, I know you're doing a lot to support small businesses and we're, we're here to help. So uh, Michael, Mercedes, La, Kerleen. Oh, great to see you, Kerleen. Thank you guys. Uh, Noreen, uh, thanks for all your great questions. Really appreciate your time, everybody. Look forward to seeing you next week.